The continents of Asia and Oceania are known for being home to thousands of the most amazing species on our world. And here, between these two continents, there is an island where this couldn't be more evident. This is the amazing land of East Timor. Living its first ages of independence, this small territory is located on the far east of southern Asia between Indonesia and Australia and it is the home of an ancient people. The East Timorese's ancestors were the ancient occupants of Wallacea. They are descendants from Malaysian, Polynesian and Papuan people and have built a different culture based on strong beliefs that are intertwined with the island's nature, especially its fauna and its geography. They have lived here for thousands of years and there are about 16 different languages in East Timor and more than 30 dialects. There are languages of Aboriginal, Melanesian and Malayan origin, some with a strong Portuguese influence, a true mosaic of cultural inheritance. This island is deeply inside Wallacea, a region to which Alfred Wallace, a pivotal naturalist of the 19th century, dedicated his life researching and which is one of the most important biodiversity hotspots on the planet. And we can easily understand why nature thrives so vigorously here. With just about 15,000 square kilometers, it's amazing to see the all diverse set of landscapes that can be found here. The land changes from high peak tropical forests to savannas or to the incredible pristine beaches that surround the island. Here, in the most eastern point of the island, we can find a very curious inhabitant. The strawberry hermit crab. This small crustacean is exclusive to the Indo-Pacific region and it is a scavenger. It searches the beaches for decaying remains of other animals. They do not have the ability to produce a shell of their own, so they occupy abandoned gastropod shells, originally hosted by mollusks. This species lives in large communities, and competition is paramount. The best fit males signal their value through the intense red coloration of their legs and antennae. But when the time comes to hide from predators, it doesn't really matter how strong you are, you have to run for cover. The hermit crab is a good source of protein, so it's not surprising that many birds come here to feed. An all diverse set of different marine bird species live here, and the ornithological value of this place is widely recognized. The last scientific study that was conducted on the island counted 21 new species here and confirmed 
that there are at least nine endemic species of birds that are exclusive to the island. The prospects point towards 10 to 20 more species being discovered in the next few years. To find the true and explored treasure of the island, we have to go deep into the forest, up to the mountains. With peaks that reach 3,000 meters high, these dense forests are home for hundreds of different species. As they remained hidden during the 25 years of military Indonesian occupation, these territories are completely unexplored by the international scientific community, and we can only guess what will be discovered here. An all world of small beings brings life to these forests. And it is almost certain that as soon as scientists start to do research here, new species will be found. Not only insects, reptiles, or amphibians live in these mountains. On this tree we found an Asian palm civet, a very curious and skittish animal that is best known for the coffee blend that it produces through its digestive system. The most expensive coffee in the world, coffee luwak, can reach 200 euro per kilogram in western markets. This is a playful animal, although it leads mostly a solitary life, only pairing up for breeding season. In the Ice Age, the islands ranging from Lombok in Indonesia to the Timor Island remained separated from the Asian continent. So there are no big mammals like tigers, rhinos or elephants here. Only those which man brought for farming live on the island, like the Java reindeer, which can be seen walking along beaches, the forests or the savannas. This is a very small deer, comparing for example with the European deer and it is not much bigger than an average domestic dog. Another big mammal that can be found here is the water buffalo. As the name suggests, this herbivore needs a lot of water, so it's not surprising to see them near rain-formed ponds or rivers, where sometimes danger might be lurking. There are two crocodile species in East Timor. The saltwater crocodile, which is the biggest crocodile on earth, and the river crocodile. Unlike what most people believe, crocodiles don't need a lot of food. They just need the equivalent of one chicken per week. In East Timor, they are considered sacred animals, and there is a national legend that says that the island was forged on the back of an ancient crocodile and only a man with a bad soul will be eaten or attacked. And that is the reason why most people here aren't terrified of these animals. Nearby the Ecuador, it rains very often. This forms a big network of rivers here through the forest. This water is the lifeblood of this tropical landscape and it nourishes thousands of plants and creates this dense forest. Eventually, the water flows straight into one of the many lakes on the edges of the forest. There are several of them spread around the island, each one with very distinctive characteristics. Here, just outside the capital Dili, the Tasitolo Lake is the home of a big community of cormorants. These amazing birds fish for food in both salt and fresh water. 
They are so perfectly adapted to swimming that their wings are not impermeable to water, and so they have to spread them open to dry them out in the sun after a swim. Nearby Kom, a small village, there is a set of three beautiful lakes that are considered sacred to the locals, each one with a different color. In recent years, an Italian scientist discovered a new species of fish here, which is again a strong indicator that a lot more discoveries are here, waiting to be revealed by scientists. Just a few meters from here, we spotted a community of crab eating macaques. They are the only primates, besides humans, known to be living on the island. They live in communities that range from 5 to 60 individuals, and to reinforce their social bonds, they spend a fair portion of the day grooming each other. And speaking of mammal communities, a few kilometers west of here, nearby Baokao village, there is a very special tree. Here, a few hundred flying foxes establish their magnificent colony on one single tree. They are a very unique bat species as they have the ability to fly during the day and they are mostly fruit eaters. With completely developed flying abilities they are a key species in East Timor's ecosystem. Their main source of food are fruits and they are the ones dispersing the seeds which grow into these amazing trees creating and keeping the fantastic tropical forests of East Timor. Timorese people now have a choice to make. They will either build a future based on intelligent management of resources and guarantee a bright future for the coming generations of islanders, or they will be fooled by the easy money that comes from quick and irresponsible depletion of natural resources, and paint a very dark picture for yet another country in Southeast Asia. This place is now one of the last truly unexplored islands of our planet. With most of its territory uncharted for science, we can only imagine the amount of new species that are waiting to be discovered, never before seen by science.